guess where I am again. I'm at the RV and we're heading out for another week of travel. That's right, I'm here at the storage unit with my Ember, about to hook up and about to head out on another adventure, this time up north. But I just got it back from Woody's not too long ago, and let's go ahead and look at what did they do and what is fixed versus what is not since the last time. As you might remember, my power port was leaking and was showing um, moisture on the inside. So I know we got permission from Ember to have them reseal it, but they've actually replaced it. So uh, I'm guessing it was bad or it had water damage, but the funny thing is they didn't actually seal it. I mean, they used the gasket that came along with it, but they didn't put like a bead of seal around there. I'm gonna be sealing up this trailer over the next week or two, doing a lot of edges where maybe uh, there was no sealant before. Pretty much any place water is coming down, if there's a gap, I'm gonna be sealing it. And uh, one of the things I'll do is actually seal this port. And you might remember that the vinyl flooring that was replaced started to stain again. Apparently, they were instructed by Ember to use double stick tape on the replacement and even the double stick tape sealant uh, somehow bled through. I asked them to replace it again with a different type of linoleum. It looks like sort of a similar vinyl pattern, but I believe this is a different type of vinyl. And it looks nice. Again, you know, it's, it's nice that I've had two floor replacements, meaning, you know, I've been out camping in this thing. I'm out making it dirty. I know there was a couple of nicks in the floor from the on the last floor that was just redone um, but here I am with a brand new floor again so two years into my trailer practically and I've got a brand new floor so it does suck that we've had those stain issues but if you told me when I bought a brand new trailer that over the first two years every year we're just gonna replace the vinyl flooring for you so you have fresh vinyl flooring each year I would consider that a plus not a defect, but obviously we don't want to be dealing with stains on the floor. So I'm hoping this is the last one. The electrical problems. Am I still having electrical problems? Yes, we have not resolved the electrical problems. Uh, I retrieved it from Woody's with the intention of camping some more using my generator because I would rather camp without having my batteries working properly than not camp at all. So from what I understand, it is not the master volt system that is broken, but it's in fact the batteries are no longer functioning. They're either defective or broken. Now, Woody's has gone back and forth with Battleborn and uh, Ember. Last I heard, uh, Battleborn is willing to send two new batteries. I have two 100 milliamp hour batteries here. Uh, they, they said they would send them, but not cover the um, shipping charges and Mastervolt said that for this size inverter, a 3000 watt inverter, there should be three of these batteries. Now we know in later editions, they put bigger batteries in. So maybe that was the compromise uh, as they continued to build Ember. These should have three batteries, not two. And I know that Woody's is going to bat for that solution with Ember. Um, they've been kicking it back between Ember, Battleborn and Woody's. It's caught in some sort of loop. I'm letting them work it out. And in the meantime, because I do have the generator, I am able to go and camp. I can either park at an RV park where I can plug in, or I can park somewhere where I can just run my generator as I need to. Luckily on this trip where I'm going, I've already arranged with the property owners where I'll be staying that I can run my generator. And of course, it's an EU 3000. It's pretty damn quiet. So that means I need to run this generator if I'm going to raise and lower the jack because yes, they did replace the jack. I now have a brand new gate defender jack. It's all pretty and shiny and new, and it works like a champ, but it won't work off the batteries because I'm having problems with the batteries. So I've got to hook up the generator and have it connected for a minute or so, or make sure I'm hooked up to shore power before I try to use it. Now, compared to getting underneath there with a ratchet, and manually doing it, I'm more than happy to wait a minute of the generator being connected before I raise or lower it. Now let's test it out and see how it's working now that I've had the generator on it for, I don't know, a few minutes now. It works. I finally decided to mount the Furion monitor up on the top of the dash by the rear view mirror. This way I'm able to see it sort of where my eyes normally go to the rear view mirror. And it does block the rear view mirror, but I don't need it when I'm towing. When I'm not towing, it just slides right out because it's not really attached. It just slides into the ceiling paneling. So it works. 
This is also why I didn't get the seven inch because I knew the seven inch would be too big to stick up top there. Know what time it is? It's Costco time. Nearly essential to any RV trip for me is a stop at Costco at the beginning. Basic salad stuff, I'll actually grab wings. It's the way it needs to be. You also get the cheapest propane at Costco. So I usually try to fill up. Luckily I got a fully empty tank so I'm not wasting any money with a full recharge. And uh, let's go get some food. And I forgot, they don't charge flat rate here so you wanna make sure to pay for what you fill. Some box salad, potatoes, some avocados, some bananas. We got tomato. For us, it's always important that we get grillable vegetables. So whatever vegetables we get, I wanna be able to throw on the grill, especially if it's hot out. I don't wanna be turning on the stove. So it's gonna be salad or grillables. But we all know you can't get everything at Costco. So I'm off to the local farm market to sort of fill in the blanks. Let's go. I don't know about you, but when you get all that Costco food, you gotta go bring it into your RV. Sure, you've got a kitchen, yes, we've got water, but it is so much better if you prep it all in advance and get it all washed. You don't have to cut it all up, but just getting it all washed and then put away, if you wash it all off and then dry it off really well and store it really well, you can get many extra days out of this produce that you purchased. And it's a lot easier when we're camping to just throw together a salad or put together some grillable vegetables. So we try to prep everything in advance and we make some meats as well. So we just made a bunch of wings, some of which I'm cooking right now, and other ones that we're gonna go ahead and just kind of let marinate in what we've spiced them with. And then while we're on the trip in the next day or two, wings are just sort of the fastest barbecue snack you can make on the road other than like hot dogs and sausages. So uh, we always try to bring some wings. I have a dog that gets just as excited about the RV when she sees it as I do. Yeah, you ready for a road trip? Hey everyone, well, we got another RV trip here. Hello, Lizzie. And we are gonna explain why this is not the RV trip we originally planned. Uh, the trip we originally planned was to go to a horse ranch, believe it or not. Um, we have just started using Campertunity. Uh, this is not an endorsement of Campertunity. We're not getting paid by them or anything. We just decided to try to use um, Campertunity uh, and see what kind of um, farm setup we can get. It's sort of like Harvest Host in that it's random people with spaces at their property, but you know, you pay, it's not free. And uh, you can stay more than one night. Yeah, exactly. You can book multiple nights depending on that. They're all very different. And we started experimenting with it. So we reached out to a few different people and I found one that was basically a horse rescue ranch. And we were excited. We were gonna camp at a horse rescue ranch where there's all these horses running around. Uh, it's okay for the dogs to be off leash. We can run our generator because I still have those Battleborn problems. And so our Battleborn batteries have not been replaced and we have to use a generator. So we can use a generator 24 seven and it was perfect. We were all geared to go there. Um, I'm not gonna exactly say where it was. We contacted these people, they were all for it. But then they realized they weren't gonna be there uh, for the full time we were gonna be there. And they didn't want to burden their caretaker with having to take care of us. And so they ended up canceling on us. We had just made the reservations the day before and contacted them. So it wasn't like they were canceling on us after we had built uh, a huge vacation around it. So it's fine. We're gonna actually look to go back there again uh, because it was just, it was too beautiful of a spot. And I'd love to hear from anybody out there, but comment below, have you used Camp Opportunity? What's been in your experience? Because for us, it's been a little bit like, sort of like, it seems like dating sites or something. Like where you have to contact the person, hope they contact you back. Uh, if you connect, they, you know, you get to go there. It's, it just, it reminded me a little bit like dating sites. And we also had people flaking out on us, not replying. We were also looking at Hip Camp, the app. And there's a lot of similar things there. Multiple days you can stay, similar to Camp Opportunity, I should say. And uh, really beautiful places, very inexpensive on people's property. Sometimes there's RV resorts that have listings. So there we go. So yeah, comment below if you've used either of them and what have been your experiences. Because when I look on YouTube, all I see is sponsored posts. And you know how sponsored posts are. Just like my sponsored posts. You know I'm getting paid to say that. But we're not sponsored by Camp Virginity. Or Hip Camp. Or Hip Camp. 
So anyway, we, we, we still used Camp Opportunity. We found a different place. So this was actually, the first place we were gonna be was gonna be way up north, kind of towards 100 Mile House, if you're familiar with BC. Basically due north. Instead, we're actually backtracking across some of the very same places that we uh, went to on our last trip. And then this time we're going out to Cherryville. Um, and so this again is on the same route that we took last time, although we didn't stop in Cherryville and we really didn't spend any time in that area. So this time we're gonna spend four days there. We're gonna be in the area. We're gonna check out different regional parks, some cool waterfalls. Obviously we'll be going to some nurseries along the way. Don't forget to check out Johanna's new channel, which is Joe's Root Awakening. So we've got a whole nother day now before we arrive at that campsite. And although we'll be staying there for four days, I'm gonna be working. So we've got the satellite and all that. I'm gonna be trying to uh, keep up with my job and we're gonna to try to beat the heat because it's going to be hot. Uh, Fahrenheit wise, we're talking, it's gonna be like high 90s or into the 40s if you're talking about uh, Celsius. It's going to be hot. I can already tell we're gonna be right on the edge with our air conditioner. Once you get above, you know, like 80, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, man, being in an RV all day can be a little rough. The good news is, is this is right next to a creek or a stream. So we should be able to go waddle in the stream and keep ourselves from overheating too much. We'll see. So we're here at the Four Wheel Drive Association Shine and Show. It's basically, it's not really like a car show, like everyone has the perfect car. It's really for everyone to just admire all the work everyone's done. Most of these rigs here have something custom. Mine doesn't, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, most of these have got a lot of custom rigs. and. I don't know as much about four buying as some people do, but um, there's definitely some real classics here, like collector items, things like that. The four x four community here in BC is pretty damn robust. I mean, British Columbia is made for off-roading and the four wheel drive association of BC is a robust group. So not only are people out here showing their cars, but we got YouTubers like myself and Van City Adventure. What'd you get? I got a tank top. Um, I got the uh, khaki one, so that'll be nice. It won't be black, so it won't be as dark, and uh, I can represent. They even have four-wheel drive hearses here. Yeah. It's the only one in Canada. Wow. This is so neat. It's incredibly beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Canada's only four bot purse. Wow. Coming here is pretty much just a charity event, right? So everybody here pays to, to show off their ride and they have contests and raffles. Uh, we're gonna be leaving a little early today because this is the first day of our camping trip and we can't spend all day here. So next we're gonna go to a berry festival now. Abbotsford Berry Festival, next stop. That's gonna be our next stop. And uh, right now we're gonna go to the trailer, which has got the air conditioning on and cool down for a minute. Oh. Okay. I am here at Abbotsford Berry Festival. Most of these site, uh, places don't actually have berries, but there's a lot of good food, a lot of good merchandise. Totally everybody, families, it's free, dogs can come. It's hard to find parking, so especially for the RV, but this is really cool. Totally digging it. Families, there's a big thing in the shade. There's food trucks, lots of vendors, and uh, a pretty cool event if you can find parking. So I'm gonna check out what else they got. Okay, I got some berries. The place behind me had a really good price. There's this place over here that's like super crazy right right there. And they are just like slammed. And this place has better prices anyway. So I went to the super quiet one. Nice, I'm gonna go walk to see Joe and get out of here because this was awesome. While my wife was at the berry festival, I had to basically drive around because there was no place to park the RV. And I got myself stuck in a jam. I'll try to map it out here. And I had my first jackknife. So let's take a look. It 
it's not a big deal. Uh, but I did touch the bumper to the box. Let's take a look. There it is. Don't really see any damage here. Yeah, we'll bend that back. slept in this morning uh, now we're gonna pay the price because we're gonna be driving at the peak of heat uh, but that's all right um, we did get the uh, air conditioning running this morning off the generator although it's having a little bit of problems with that because I think the generator needs some servicing my Honda is starting to not ramp up so fast um, we did have a problem overnight where I turned on the propane heater for the first time on this trip and I kept getting error 212. So I guess that means that the propane's not getting into the Truma Combi with the proper pressure. So either the regulator's having a problem, there's some kind of leak, which, you know, I'm not smelling any propane, or maybe one of the tanks has some bad propane. I tried to troubleshoot it at like 3 a.m. I didn't try that long before I just plugged in an electric heater and went back to sleep. So maybe the regulator's getting a little funky. I'll have to add that to the list of things I test for before I pull out of the storage unit. Because I just had Highland RV repack my bearings uh, for the second time on this trip now, I've um, torqued the, the bolts on the wheels. Remember, whenever you have the wheels taken off your trailer, remember to always torque your tires a few times after you've had your wheels removed from your trailer. It's not like a car, you actually need to retorque them. And I'll tell you, I usually do it at 10 kilometers, 50 kilometers, 100 kilometers, and then 500 kilometers, and, and then I only do it really at the beginning of a trip. But I'll tell you, when I torque them, after they've been driven around around 50 kilometers, on almost all my trailers, there's a little bit of give. It's not crazy, but there's a few pounds of torque that I still need to add to get it to click again. So it's important that you do that, or else your wheel might literally fall off after having a simple tire change or bearings repack. So we're actually back at Loon Lake rest area where we stayed overnight. It's just an ultra quiet rest area, and we really didn't have our plans reconfigured well after we had the horse ranch cancel out on us uh, but we're making do uh, we're taking some time today to deal with the heat go try to get the dogs into the lake uh, go do some flower shopping we're gonna hit up a few nurseries for my wife and her channel which is Joe's Root Awakening and really today it's just gonna be a game of let's beat the heat we also might get an RV spot tonight and that's mainly so that we can get the trailer ready because we'll be off grid for four days at this farm we're going to. And I also want to maybe service the generator. Maybe it's time for an oil change and I'll put the appropriate oil in there for hot temperatures. Right now I'm using an oil that's basically made for, you know, mid range between hot and cold. I can swap it out with an oil that's much better for hot weather and that's what I may do. I just started filming again, but you, you got narrowed down to three. Two. Two. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's the thumbnail right there. Look at all the colors. It's very pretty.
two we just passed. And then we've got a... Uh, a lot of these just have fire pits and a little stick that signifies what number it is. Well, we finally made it to our new destination. It's uh, a creek and a farm, basically. Oh, I'm getting water in my eye. <laughs> we got a creek and we got a farm. And um, there's a couple other people who are also staying here at the farm. Uh, they're actually gold panners. So one of them might take Johanna out tomorrow while I'm working and, and show them gold panning. That'd be cool. Um, it'll be her new YouTube channel after plants. <laughs> here we are. We're at the campsite. You can see some of the RVs are right up there. There's only two RVs and a couple of tents here. Um, we actually got hookups here, so it's just like being at an RV site. Oh, look at the butterfly. But uh, yeah, right now we're just cooling down. It's about 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, uh, and so it is hot. It's been a real hot day going from plant store to plant store. Um, the generator is barely keeping up with the air conditioner, um, but we're here and we don't need the generator because there's power. Good girl, Lizzie. Not a bad place to work. Nothing like hiking while it's 100 degrees out. Well, we just visited Shushwap Falls. Uh, it's a power generating site. You find a lot of times in BC when there's some falls, there's also some power generation going on because why waste the energy, right?
You can see we got some cool footage of the falls themselves, some of the lake. Uh, it is baking hot out, so going real slow here through the shaded area. But it wasn't a crazy hike, so if you want to come here, there's no real hike to it. It's just too hot out. Um, and uh, yeah, it was real pretty. We also found a campground called Cherryville Rec Site, which is near where we're staying, but it's not really a rec site anymore. It's been like decommissioned. So we found it on the map anyway, drove out to it. And it was a mix of some people maybe camping long term, if you know what I mean, as well as a bunch of empty sites. So there's no fee there. And if you find it on the map uh, and you're looking for a free place to stay overnight, Cherryville Rec Site's another good spot. This spot at, Ch at Chushop Falls, it's not for camping. This is just for uh, day visits. So in one of our last videos, we stayed at a place called Lost Lake. It was actually a rest area. And I showed some, some drone footage of it, uh, but we ended up not driving down the road because it was nighttime and we had a trailer. So we didn't know that we could drive down this road and see this beautiful camping area. But this time, since we're, we're near it, I decided to come back over here on a day trip, go explore with the truck. Turns out it's real easy to get an RV down here, trailer. I wouldn't take like a big class A, but uh, this is a nice little area. You can apparently stay here for like four days. I don't know the official rules, but I asked someone who was here and uh, it's officially a camping zone. It's right next to a beautiful lake. Somebody got their, uh, their boat in the water. So I don't know if there's a boat launch or if they're just creative with a four by four and a boat trailer, but you know, some flies, some bugs, mosquitoes haven't been crazy yet. But it's the middle of a hot day, so we'll see. Right now we're just out here in the lake, throwing the ball with the dog, looking at all the tadpoles and weird things in the water. It's a pretty rich lake, I think. A lot of life teeming in this lake. And the water is crystal clear. After a week of hanging out at the Cherryville site, we headed to our next campertunity or hip camp spot in Caledon, BC in the Okanagan Valley. She said, <laughs> Michael. 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 Michael, please.
This space has water and 30 amp electrical, as well as the use of their pump house, which had a freezer, a fridge, garbage, recycling, and some shelves and storage, as well as some additional 110 power outlets. I've put a link in the description in case you want to stay here. We went and explored the very small town of Caledon and used the unofficial dog beach. And then, there's Linus trying to get away from the water. We checked out the abandoned hotel from early last century. We also explored Penticton while we were down here. We always drove past there, but never really stopped in. We just stayed a couple of nights and then worked our way back on the Crow's Nest Highway with a quick stop at what remains of the Ashnola Forest. Ashnola Forest. Now you might remember we stayed here last year and you can see from last year's videos how lush and green the forest is or was because you can contrast that with the forest fire that ripped through this area and what it looks like now. And here's a little sneak preview of what the next camping trip is going to be about.